Hey everyone, Jimmy Mullen here, and welcome to episode three of the Jimmy M Podcast. Before I get started with what we're going to discuss today, uh, I'd just like to say thank you to everyone who has supported the first two episodes of the podcast. I put them out basically back to back. Uh, you know, day one was the first episode, day two was the second. Uh, and it's been a couple days now, it's been about a week uh, since I started the podcast. And I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who has watched and or listened uh, to either just the first episode or the second or both. Uh, I really appreciate all the support I've gotten. I've gotten tons of comments and feedback from friends and family and a bunch of people I sent it out to and stuff like that. So I just wanted to say thank you for all the support. I'd also like to remind you guys uh, that if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to have links to all of the other audio platforms you can watch the podcast on or listen to rather. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and now Google Podcasts. Uh, so if you listen on Google Podcasts, you can uh, check it out on there. Um, it, that one took a couple days for some reason. It took like way too long for it to approve and all that. With Apple Podcasts, it was practically instant. Same with Spotify. Spotify was like, as soon as it was published on Anchor, it was on Spotify. Which, by the way, Anchor is the service I'm using to get it out on practically every platform. It's not sponsored. That's just the service that allows me to do it for free. I know they were bought out by Spotify, uh, which I guess gives the platform more attention. Uh, I mean, I knew about it beforehand. I've actually known about it for a couple of years. I think ever since Casey Neistat started his podcast, I forgot exactly when that was, but I know he was doing that around the time he started the 368 building. At least that's when I heard about it. So once the uh, YouTube version is up, if you're watching it on YouTube, I'm going to have links to this episode on every platform that I have it on. I'm going to try and get it out on the other platforms that Anchor allows you to bring it to. Uh, I will be doing that pretty soon. So stay tuned for that if you're listening on any of those. Not really sure, but if you are, hi, how are you? And yeah, that's pretty much it for the introduction. Just wanted to get that out there. Thank you to everyone once again for supporting and checking out the podcast. I really appreciate it. I have my phone here with a bunch of notes on it that I'm going to be looking at. Uh, referencing for what I'm going to talk about as there's a lot to delve into today. Um, we're going to talk about all the cool stuff that happened in 2021 in regards to music, TV, movies, and mainly just stuff that I checked out as I know there's plenty of stuff uh, that came out this year that I haven't seen uh, or I just don't care for. Um, there, there's a lot that I missed, uh, but I think what I did watch was great. And I'd love to talk about it today. So I'm thinking we'll start with video games as uh, this is probably going to be the lightest topic of all of them as uh, while I've always loved video games, I've been playing video games since I was like, I don't know. Well, I had my first Nintendo console, the Wii. Uh, I got that Christmas 2009 ever since I've been a Nintendo fan. In the past couple of years, I've kind of stopped playing video games. Well, not necessarily stopped, but more like just it's taken a back seat. Uh, I don't buy every single new release anymore. I, I buy a lot of the Nintendo ones, like a lot of the first party titles. A lot of them I haven't even touched. Um, but I'm still a Nintendo fan at heart. I always will be. Um, and something that gets me really excited about Nintendo, uh, relating to Nintendo, is Smash Brothers. Smash is a fantastic franchise that I've that introduced me to practically everything Nintendo. Like, going into Brawl, I only knew Mario, Pokemon, and Sonic. That was it. Uh, and it really opened the doors for me, all the possibilities. So, uh, naturally, Smash Ultimate, bringing all that together, and then some with all the DLC. I could go on talking about every character. But this year, we got the final three newcomers. We got Pyra and Mithra from Xenoblade 2, uh, that was back in like February, I think they got announced. Uh, I never played Xenoblade 2, nor the first one. I'm not really too attached to Xenoblade, really, but I think they're cool additions. I played them a lot, and they're a lot of fun. Uh, Kazuyo got announced at E3. Um, honestly, I wasn't really that excited for it. I'm not too, f I'm not too big on Tekken. Uh, my girlfriend uh, is really big on Tekken. She loves Tekken. Uh, I've finally played the series. I have Tekken 7 now on PS4. And Tekken Tag Tournament 2, I also own. I didn't have those beforehand. Uh, but those are a lot of fun. Uh, at least, you know, before Kazuya got revealed, I had, like, no attachment to Tekken. And then the last character to get revealed 
was Sora from Kingdom Hearts. Uh, as you may know, I posted a reaction uh, to Sora getting added to Smash uh, when they did the whole broadcast and all that. You can check that out on my YouTube channel. Um, I was very excited about that. Even though I've never played a Kingdom Hearts game, I just knew how crazy that was, how crazy of a deal that was, because they had to go through Disney for that. Disney's not a video game company. It's the first time they've had to work with a non-video game company to get a character into Smash Brothers. Because uh, technically he's an original character from a video game. Uh, even though it's like a crossover between a video game series and a multimedia empire like Disney. So it was really cool to see that. Uh, I was very excited. And I love playing as Sora. He's a lot of fun. Uh, he, I feel like he's really broken. But I don't know. I'm not really a competitive Smash player. I just kind of play it for fun with my friends. So yeah, all that stuff was great. Uh, as for other game-related stuff, uh, the only games I really touched were... Mario Party Superstars, and Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, at least for new titles from this year. Uh, Mario Party Superstars uh, was great uh, from what I played. Uh, I love how it's just an awesome culmination of tons of different classic Mario Party games. Uh, they have like mini games from across the entire series, and then all the boards are based on ones from the first three games on Nintendo 64. That's really cool. Um, I haven't played it too much, but I'm looking to have my friends over pretty soon to play it. Uh, I know there's an online mode, um, and I haven't been able to try that out yet, but I can't wait to do so. Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl is really interesting. It's a Smash Brothers clone, uh, but it's all Nickelodeon characters, and uh, I play. I have it on, on PS4, like the PS5 free upgrade or whatever, um, and I, I, I really like it. I think it's fun. I'm just really concerned with the fact that the game was, like, rushed. And, I mean, it was. the Like, the game was released unfinished. Like, they're just adding voice acting now to the game. Like, voice clips that the characters said and did nothing, practically. Uh, like, other than the animations and stuff, you didn't really get much out of the characters. And I feel like there's so much potential with that. But it just didn't meet the mark on that end. Again, I haven't played it too much, but I really liked what I did. I tried out a couple characters. It was a lot of fun. And then, you know, this wasn't 2021, but this game's coming out next year. But we did get a trailer, so I thought I'd talk about it a little bit. Multiverses is probably going to be something that's way up my alley. I'm more familiar with Warner Brothers and Cartoon Network stuff than Nickelodeon. Like, I grew up on Nickelodeon, but it's, like, a lot of the characters on there. Like, I'm not a 90s kid. I didn't grow up on a lot of the 90s shows. I'm not too familiar with a lot of them. I understand the impact that a lot of them have, and I think that's really great. Uh, but I don't know. A lot of them just didn't resonate with me, and I was more of a Cartoon Network kid anyway. I didn't watch too much SpongeBob growing up. Multiverses looks like a freaking blast. Its focus on 2v2 is really interesting to me. I mean, you can do stuff like that in Smash, but to have that as the focus, I think, is really cool. It already has a really promising roster. Like, we got some Cartoon Network stuff like Adventure Time, Steven Universe... Uh, and we got, you know, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Harley Quinn from DC. Uh, there's a couple other characters thrown in there. Bugs Bunny, Tom and Sherry, uh, Shaggy from Scooby-Doo, but he's like based on like all the memes from a couple of years ago. I thought that was really cool. And so far it looks like it's going to be a pretty promising game. I know there were a couple leaks that showed some other characters. I think like Rick from Rick and Morty is going to be in the game. I think that's really funny. There's not too many characters that I would love to see in the game that haven't been already announced, but if there's one character that I would love to see more than any character, it's Ben 10, and preferably the original continuity Ben, whether it's the classic Ben or even Omniverse Ben, I think would be perfect because it's like Ben at his peak, like at the very end of the original continuity, I think would be fantastic. And especially with the recent passing of Derek J. Wyatt, it would be incredible to see. But anyway, the game looks like a lot of fun, and I'm really excited to see what they do with it. I'm hoping that it's great. It looks really promising, and it's free. It's going to be a free game, which is the best part about it. So, uh, I mean, yeah, they'll probably have, like, microtransactions and stuff to, like, unlock characters or whatever. But honestly, I'll take it. It looks like a fun time. And as long as we get Ben 10, I'll be happy. I mean, I'm already happy, but having Ben 10 would make me ecstatic. That's going to do it for games. Uh, let's talk about music. Uh, now, music is something that uh, I'm in a constant loop with. Uh, I listen to the same songs over and over, and I don't 
explore my horizons much. There's a lot of artists that I love and I've like hardly listened to their discography. I've like barely touched the surface when it comes to a lot of them, which is a shame, but there were a couple albums this year that I did listen to in full. It doesn't happen too often with every artist. There's some albums that I like was like, Oh, I'm so hyped for, or like, Oh, that came out. And then I just never listened to it or still haven't. There's a lot of that. Uh, there's albums that I listen to like a couple songs and then I just never get around to finishing it. But the first one I want to mention is call me if you get lost by Tyler, the creator. This was a great album. Igor was fantastic. And this one was, I honestly, I think, I think this one might be a little better than Igor. Um, those are the two albums that I've listened to in their entirety. As for the other ones, I have not. I'm actually wrong about that. I just listened to Cherry Bomb a little while back with my girlfriend. So there's that one too. I really love the song What's Your Name uh, featuring NBA Youngboy and Ty Dolla Sign. I think it's the best I've ever heard NBA Youngboy do on a song. Personally, I haven't heard too much of him, but this was honestly my favorite feature from him that I've ever heard. The songs with Lil Wayne as well as the songs with Lil Uzi Vert and Pharrell were also fantastic. Montero by Lil Nas X was so great. Uh, I've really loved to see all of the great stuff that's come out of Lil Nas X's discography and all the songs he's put out. They've all been bangers, and uh, I definitely see him becoming a great in the music industry. I see so much potential in him. He's doing he's doing phenomenally, and he's really changing the game. Like he's really changing the agenda and bringing a lot more acceptance to LGBTQ and stuff like that. And he's doing a great job with it. And he's he's young. He understands internet culture. He knows how to promote himself, and he's doing a fantastic job with it. The fucking billboards that he was putting out like to promote the album were funny as hell, and I can't wait to see where he goes next. He had a song with Billy Ray. like Billy Ray hopped on the Old Town Road remix, but now he's got Miley on a song. Once he gets Noah on, he'll complete the trifecta, I guess. The songs with Jack Harlow, Industry Baby, were great. Uh, Doja Cat, Megan The Stallion. Uh, Elton John was on piano on one of the songs. Like, he's, he's doing great, and I'm really excited to see what he does next. The next two albums, Donda and Certified Lover Boy, are two albums that I'm, that I enjoy, but I'm not, like, too crazy about as compared to, like, their older work. Uh, I think Certified Lover Boy was a bit of a letdown, uh, personally. Like, I, I enjoyed a lot. I enjoyed a good handful of the tracks, uh, TSU, Pipe Down, Way Too Sexy, Knife Talk with 21 Savage, and Project Pad, I think is my favorite on the whole album. Uh, except for Drake's part, honestly. I didn't like that part that much. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it's all right. I, I think the album cover, though, is probably the worst part about it. Like, just have, just putting that album cover next to, like, all his other ones, it just doesn't, it just not, it just doesn't, I don't know, I just can't get over it. It's like, it's like a bunch of different colored pregnant woman emojis. It's like, this is so stupid. Like, at least make it look more, like, artistic, because he literally just, like, copied and pasted, like, the same emoji and then changed the color for, like, each one. It just, I don't know, it just doesn't look cool to me. I feel like it could have been something... A lot cooler, but I don't know. I feel like he's treating it as a joke. I mean, because he can. I mean, it gets people talking, but, like, I don't know. I just didn't like it that much. Album probably could have been better, too. And as for Donda, uh, Donda's great. I love Donda. Uh, way more than Certified Lover Boy. I feel like that one has way more replay value. It's got, like, feature on top of feature on top of feature. There's so many great ones. What do we got here? Jay-Z. Playboy Cardi, Fivio Foreign, The Weeknd, Lil Baby, Baby Keem, Travis Scott, Lil Yachty, Young Thug, uh, Pop Smoke was on like an alternate version of We Made It. That was the name of the song, right? Or Tunnel Vision? I forgot the name of it. Uh, Tell the Vision? No, yeah, it was Tell the Vision. Uh, yeah, by the way, that new Pop Smoke album, very disappointing. Uh, I feel like it was more of a cash grab. I feel like Shoot for the Stars and for the Moon was more complete, or at least as complete as it could be. Faith, they were definitely reaching. I will just say that. I didn't enjoy that album very much overall. And then to top it off, we had uh, Life of the Party on the deluxe version of the album with Andre 3000. Uh, I feel like that song drags just a little bit, but I think it's one of the better ones out of the whole album. And then uh, before I get to my favorite album of the year that I listened to, uh, I listened to part of Baby Keem's album, The Melodic Blue. 
Uh, the two songs with Kendrick Lamar are great. Range Brothers and Family Ties, fantastic songs. They're so catchy. Probably some of the best I've heard all year. And then while I didn't listen to these albums really, I just want to say that what Taylor Swift is doing with re-releasing her old albums and so that way she can get the masters for all of them because she lost them through some buyout or I don't know the exact details, but I think what she's doing is great. And uh, I'm just glad that she's able to get her own music because, you know, not being able to perform or do anything with your old songs because a record label has a hold of them sucks. So by doing this loophole, by re-recording all of them, I feel like it's an event and plus it's nostalgic for all the people that grew up listening to her, all the Swifties and shit like that. You know, it, it's really great for them and I, I congratulate her for all of her success and what she's doing with that. It's not often you see an artist re-record an entire album. Usually it's like they fix up the audio and make it sound clearer or something. But no, she's literally re-recording every song and then including new ones on top of that. Well, not new ones, but like unreleased songs that she's saying they're like from the vault, like the Disney vault or whatever. I think that's cool too. And then my favorite album of the year was An Evening with Silk Sonic by Silk Sonic. I know there were hundreds of other albums that came out, but this is the one that really got me going. Uh, it was such a long wait though, because like they put out Leave the Door Open. And I was like, this sounds like it's going to be something crazy. And then they came out with Skate. Smoking Out the Window was a fucking blast. And then they drop the rest of the album, and I'm so mad that it's only 30 minutes. It's only, I don't even know how many tracks it has, like 10 or 12. Um, but it's it's fantastic. Uh, every song on there is great. I love it. I know some people didn't like it as much, but I loved it. It was fantastic. Blast Off, it might be my favorite song on the album. That's the concluding track on the album. might be my favorite overall. Okay, we're going to get into... TV now. This is going to be a bit more brief as I don't really watch too many TV shows and then I have all the Marvel stuff at the end. Uh, so let's talk about some of the non-Marvel things, non-Marvel shows I watched. Uh, uh, I watched the last few episodes of the Ben 10 reboot uh, that started in 2016, uh, which I've seen like a handful of episodes on TV here and there, but it's not a show that I love i mean i love a lot of the things they do differently from the original continuity they do some things a lot better from what i've seen uh but a lot of the like these they did these like three episodes they were like i don't know if they were like one hour specials or like an hour and a half or something but they were these like m almost movie length final episodes of the show uh they had the first one was like a future episode with ben 10,000 i thought was great they did one with Generator Rex, which, of course, we haven't seen for years, which, by the way, um, they should bring Generator Rex back on HBO Max or at least put the show on there so I can watch it because that's a great show. So underrated and so unknown for a lot of people that didn't check it out or anything. It's a great show. If you have the chance to watch Generator Rex, do it. And then the last episode was Alien Extinction. Uh, they made Alien X like a villain, and it's like, oh, wait, what, what's going on with that? And then they have, like, every version of Ben, like, one from, like, each show come in, and, like, Yuri Lowenthal even comes back to voice some of them. I think that's great. They had one from the OG series. They had one from Alien Force, Ultimate Alien, Omniverse. Uh, it, it was just a fun time all around. I thought it was really cool to see that. Uh, we had the return of like Chroma Stone and Amphibian, a lot of these aliens I grew up loving. It was fantastic all around. Uh, it's on HBO Max, which is what I was waiting for to watch them. Uh, if you have not seen it, do yourself a favor. If you're a Ben 10 fan, at least check out the final three episodes of the show. Um, as for someone who hasn't seen most of it, uh, I will check it out eventually. I just have so many shows I got to watch beforehand. So uh, it is on my bucket list, though. As for anime, um, I watched a good amount of it in like late middle school, early high school. And then like throughout all of high school in the last few years, the only anime I've really watched is Dragon Ball, uh, specifically Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super, um, which is a franchise I've grown to love so much, so dearly. It pains me that I didn't get into it sooner, 
because it's so cool and so amazing. But a show that I got recommended uh, was Cowboy Bebop. And it was so fun and so riveting. It was amazing. And uh, honestly, might be some of my favorite animated material I've ever seen. I got to watch it a few more times to really appreciate it. Um, But from what I've seen, I love it. It's fantastic. And I wish they would have done more. But it's only 26 episodes. And I haven't seen the movie. They did make a live action adaptation of Cowboy Bebop this year for Netflix. And it's already been canceled. Um, I started watching it. I haven't seen the entire thing. But it's all right so far. I mean, it's not great. Honestly, I think it would have been better if they just left it alone. Not every honestly, I don't think everything needs a live action adaptation, but hey, if they can make money on it, they might as well. And um I don't think it's disrespectful or anything to the original because they even put the original show on Netflix around the time this new one was coming out. So you can still watch the original show. It's not like they're getting rid of it. It's just another way to watch it, I guess. It's not the exact same thing, but I digress. And then finally, for shows other than Marvel, Stranger Things was a show I watched for the first time this year, thanks to my girlfriend, who loves the show endlessly. Uh, She's been a fan for quite a while. I don't think she was a fan at the very beginning, but uh, she hopped on the train for it a couple years ago, and I finally got to watch it with her, and it was fantastic. All three seasons were great, and I'm so hyped for the fourth one. Uh... The fact that I don't have to wait as long as everyone else, because at this point, it's going to be, uh, by the time the fourth season finally comes out, it's going to be like three years since the third one came out. So it's like a three-year wait from seasons three to four. And a lot of that, of course, was due to the pandemic, but I'm really excited to see what they do with the fourth season. I have no idea what's going to happen. I'm just so hyped for it, and I'm, I can't wait. A little unrelated, but... You know, it's related to Stranger Things. Uh, My girlfriend and I uh, went to the Stranger Things store in New York City, the little pop-up shop they had in Times Square. We went twice, actually. Um, It was a lot of fun. Uh, If you were there, you know how great it was. And uh, I don't think it's there anymore. I'm not entirely sure. Now will probably be the second biggest portion of this episode. Let's talk about movies. Uh, As that's something I do a lot with my time watching movies. Now, I did not watch as many movies this year as I did 2020. I know 2020 was a lot less social of a year, so I had more time to do that, as I wasn't doing very much other than that. But 2021, I did watch a good handful of new releases. I went to the theaters a lot more, as a matter of fact. I went a lot in early 2020, but then once March hit, I went one other time. Uh, I think it was like November or August or something. I forgot what month it was that I went to go see Tenet. But uh, that was like the one movie I saw after the pandemic started in 2020. Um, As for 2021, I saw a good handful of stuff in theaters. Uh, But real quick, I just want to talk about some movies or like mention some movies that I watched for the first time this year that I loved. Uh, I started out the year watching the first three, not the first, the, the three how to Train Your Dragon movies. Uh, I had never seen them before. They were fantastic. Uh, some other movies, Swiss Army Man, uh, Crazy Stupid Love, Semi Pro was really stupid, but I loved it. Uh, Dragon Ball Evolution, uh, which is not a very good movie at all. Uh, it's terrible, as a matter of fact, but I watched that for the first time this year. thought I'd mention it. Uh, Spring Breakers, uh, The New Mutants, which came out in 2020. That movie was in like development hell, kept getting delayed, and then they finally put it out in 22. It was about to finally come out, then the pandemic hits. So they had to delay it again. Yeah, that was a whole mess. Um, what else? Uh, the lack, the What else? Uh, the last Blockbuster documentary got put out on Netflix, so I checked that out. Uh, Trick or Treat, I watched with my girlfriend. That was a really fun movie. Uh, Freaky was another fun movie, directed by the same guy who made the Happy Death Day movies. Uh, those are really fun. Uh, so I really enjoyed myself with Freaky. That was a great movie. Uh, Eight Mile, I saw for the first time this year. I had never seen it before. Uh, I watched the Ewoks movies, the TV movies. They put them out on Disney Plus randomly this year. Actually, no, I think it was for Star Wars Day. I think they put those out. 
Um, but I didn't watch them on Star Wars Day. It was like a random day in the summer. Uh, Adventures in Babysitting, another movie I saw this year. Uh, a goofy movie. Never saw that until this year. Uh, I watched the John Wick movies. I had never seen those before. Those are fantastic, by the way. Uh, very good movies. And uh, the Halloween movies I watched. Uh, all of them, all the way up to uh, the 2018 Halloween movie. So I saw Halloween, Halloween 2. The third one that was like the one about the masks. Uh, the fourth one, 5, 6. Uh, the H2O one. Uh, and then what was it Halloween Resurrection. That movie was terrible. Uh, and then the, the Rob Zombie ones. I thought those were all right. Uh, and then uh, we watched the new one, not the new, the newest one, but the the 2018 one. That's like a sequel to the first. Retcons all of the other ones. It's like, yeah, no, those don't exist. Those didn't happen. Uh, they've rebooted this franchise, I think, like two or three times. It's very confusing. If you want to watch all of them, which I did, uh, we were, we, my girlfriend and I were watching them all in anticipation for Halloween Kills. Uh, but life just kind of got in the way and we never got around to see it. So I still have not seen the new one, uh, but I'm really looking forward to doing that uh, either in the new year or in the last couple of days of this year. I don't know. We'll see. I also watched the two original Ghostbusters movies for the first time. I had never seen them before. And all I can really say about those about those two movies that really stood out to me was that Bill Murray's character, Venkman, is an asshole. That's all I can really say. Um, I didn't really enjoy them that much. Like I didn't grow up on them, but like, I, I mean like they were good movies. I just, I don't know. They're, they're not really my favorites or anything. They're all right. I guess. Um, this new one, however, Ghostbusters afterlife, I will get to later, but that was a major improvement. I will say. Um, and then the final movie that's like a highlight, at least that I had never seen before was the amazing Spider-Man two. Uh, it was the one movie uh, that I watched uh, that I hadn't seen uh, from, like, the live-action Spider-Man movies. Uh, I, I didn't enjoy it as much. Uh, you know, it's the studio kind of was like, oh, you got to have the Goblin in there, and Jamie Foxx's Electro was pretty lame. Uh, but they made up for it in No Way Home, which I'll talk about later. But, yeah, uh, I watched The Amazing Spider-Man too. thought I'd just mention that. Um, so now I'm going to talk about 2021 movies. Uh, let's, let's do that. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to talk about a couple honorable mentions and then I'm going to talk about my top 10, uh, movies I saw this year. Uh, so we'll start out, uh, give some honorable mentions, uh, bad trip. It's a movie with Eric Andre and, uh, it was, it was, it was a fun, it's like a mix of like a hidden camera prank show and like there's like a story going on but a lot of like the pranks kind of like I, I don't know it was, it was a little ridiculous um but there were a lot of really funny moments i watched it twice the first time by myself and the second time i watched it with my girlfriend she hadn't seen it she loved it she thought it was hilarious uh, another honorable mention uh f9 the Fast Saga, the ninth Fast and Furious movie. Uh, something I did not mention before was I watched uh, all of the Fast and Furious movies, at least the ones I hadn't seen. I had seen the first three. I did not rewatch those, but I watched uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, and uh, Hobbs and Shaw leading up to F9. And uh, yeah, at this point, the franchise is like a sci-fi movie. I, I a lot of people didn't like this one, but I I just I just couldn't help but sit in the theater just dying of laughter at how ridiculous it all was and I think that's the point and you know a lot, a lot of people are just like they're too like invested in like oh no you can't do that yeah no shit nothing about these movies has been realistic and they're just getting so out of hand at this point but I don't even care I'm here for the ride as stupid as all these movies are I have I love them, and this one is probably this part was probably the most ridiculous out of all of them. I don't want to get into spoilers in case you haven't seen the movie. Although I'm going to be talking about Marvel later, um, but all the memes about them doing certain activities kind of came true, and uh, they're they're a lot more self aware that 
you know, they have like no scratches and they've survived all these crazy things over the years. And yeah, I, I don't know. It was just, <laughs> it was just so stupid. Uh, Cruella was another really good one. I don't have too much to say about it, uh, but Emma Stone was great in the role. I think she did a really great job. Uh, Raya and the Last Dragon is another really fun animated movie. I don't remember too much about it, though. I got to watch it again. Um, and then Venom Let There Be Carnage uh, was way better than the first one. I actually watched the first one for the first time this year, right before going to see the second one. I forgot to mention that. I thought I'd just say it here instead. Um, yeah, really ridiculous. I think they really just nailed it down. Like, let's just make this a comedy because, like, they made the first one a bit of a comedy, but they were trying to be a little too serious at the same time. I think that's, like, my main criticism with the first Venom movie. But the second one, they were just like, fuck it. Let's just make it a comedy. And it works, I think, for the most part. Um, and, you know, with it tying into the MCU a bit and all that, it's, uh, so it's, I don't know if it's a must watch if you're an MCU fan, but I mean, if you like Venom, you like Spider-Man, might as well check it out. That's why I checked it out. Uh, and yeah, that's going to do it for some honorable mentions. Uh, let's get into the top 10 movies of 2021. Uh, starting out number 10, Black Widow, uh, not one of my favorite MCU movies, but still pretty good. Um, I just feel like the stakes of the movie weren't very high or anything. Uh, you know, the fact that it's about a character who died and it's not like, it's not even an origin story. Like they have a beginning part of the movie, but the rest of it like takes place in between two of the biggest movies in the franchise and, like, the title of the movie is just Black Widow. It's like, I don't know. It's it just, like, I mean, if it was, like, Black Widow and, like, a subtitle or something like that, I feel like that would have been more understanding. But, I don't know, you, you kind of set this precedent that it's, like, an origin or something like that. But it's not. It's really not. Um, still a great movie, though. Uh, Yelena was was hilarious. I think she stole the show practically the whole movie. Uh, yeah, that's all I really have to say. Uh, the Mitchells versus the Machines was great. Uh, that, that's such a great animated movie. If you've never seen it, it's on Netflix. Check it out. Art style is to die for. Uh, it's so wholesome and, uh, it's about a nice little family gathering vacation and stuff and like robots take over the world and shit. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a good time. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, Godzilla vs. Kong is number eight. Uh, probably the best out of all of the newer MonsterVerse movies. And I loved Kong Skull Island. I love that movie. Uh, as for the two Godzilla ones, I watched those for the first time this year as well. Uh, I didn't really like them. I didn't really like them that much. They they were, they were kind of meh. Uh, Godzilla vs. Kong is a great movie, though, if you've never seen it. Uh, number seven is Free Guy. Free Guy is a uh, fun time, I think, uh, especially if you're a fan of Ryan Reynolds. It's a uh, it's a must watch, I think personally. Uh, I had a I had a fucking blast with it, and it's coming to Disney Plus, I think, in like January or something. Like they're putting it out on Disney Plus, which is awesome. So uh, if you've never seen it, uh, I guess wait till then or something. I don't know. Or if you're able to access it, you should watch the movie anyway. It's a fun time. Uh, number six was The Suicide Squad, the new James Gunn directed sequel to the 2016 Disappointment. Uh, he did a great job. This movie, I, I kind of want to thank Marvel for firing him only because he made this movie and he, they let him practically do whatever the fuck he wanted. And uh, it was a fun time. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it blows the original out of the water by a landslide. And they kind of, like, by calling it The Suicide Squad, not even calling it Suicide Squad 2, it really just goes to show that they really preferred this movie over the original, and they kind of just wanted to wipe it out. Um, and I mean, yeah, there is some, like, continuity from the second, from the first one that goes into the second one. Like, you know, it's a few same characters like Harley Quinn uh, and a few other ones. Uh, there's a lot of new ones in here, like John Cena and Idris Elba. 
are in this movie and they're great. They're fantastic. Uh, yeah, that's all I really have to say. Uh, number five is Ghostbusters Afterlife. Uh, very, very surprising how good this movie was. Uh, I wasn't expecting too much going in as I didn't really enjoy like the originals as much. Like there's, they're good movies. It's just like, you know, they're not like groundbreaking, fantastic, awesome. I know they're very nostalgic for a lot of people. I just didn't enjoy them as much. Uh, but, uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife fucking blows those movies out of the water. They're, they're so good. They're very, very good movies. I mean, but Ghostbusters Afterlife is a very good movie. It's, it's, I don't know, man. It's, it's just really fun. Uh, Paul Rudd is great. Finn Wolfhard, McKenna Grace, they're all fantastic. At number four is Malignant. And I don't have too much to say about this movie other than I was not expecting the plot twist about it. Uh, but I really enjoyed it. It was, it was like, it was a little nerve wracking a little bit, a little, little disturbing, but I still enjoyed it. Nonetheless, it was, it was actually really fun. Number three is Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Uh, this was a really nice surprise, a great origin story that we, you know, we haven't had one of those in a while. Uh, so this was really nice. Uh, Simu Lu is great as Shang-Chi, uh, Aquafina was like the funny gag character, but she was she was great. A nice post snap MCU movie, uh, and I'm really excited to see uh, what they do with this character in the future. I know a sequel is already in the works. Honestly, if they get the same guy to direct a Dragon Ball live action movie, I feel like he could do it really well. But I don't know about anyone else. A lot of the visuals were great. A lot of the action scenes were great. I feel like if that guy was making a Dragon Ball movie, he'd do fantastic. I remember Chris Stuckman said the same thing in his video on Shang-Chi, and I agree. Number two is A Quiet Place Part 2, which for most of the year, this was my number one movie of the year. Um, but uh, I got to say, it's been brought down in number two, but uh, it's for good reason, which I'll get to in a second. It might be a little obvious, but whatever. Um... Yeah, Quiet Place Part 2 was a lot of fun. I loved the first movie. I didn't see it in theaters, but I watched it, like, about two years ago, like, in 2019. Um, I loved it. John Krasinski did a fantastic job in that movie. And this second movie is honestly better. I actually liked it more than the first one. Uh, I saw it twice in theaters. Uh, the second time was at uh, my friend's movie theater that he was running. At the time, but the first time I saw it, uh, it was actually on my birthday. I saw it with a couple of friends, Evan, Justin, and Mauricio. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I I really enjoyed it. All of the all of the characters were great acting wise. They really brought the roles to life, and they they did such a great job. It just felt really natural. And number one, if it wasn't obvious enough, Spider Man No Way Home is my movie of the year, my most anticipated movie of the year by a long shot, and they fucking nailed it. <clears throat> and they fucking nailed it. Uh, especially if you are a fan of the older Spider-Man movies, they bring back all of the villains from those movies, and uh, a few more surprises, which I'll get into in a bit. Um, but honestly, it's the best Tom Holland has been in the MCU, it's the best of the home trilogy that the MCU has brought to life. And all of the villains are great. I loved seeing them all come back. And uh, Willem Dafoe as the Goblin was great. Uh, Alfred Molina's Doc Ock. Jamie Foxx as Electro. Thomas Hayden Church as the Sandman. Rise of Fonz, or I, I don't know how to say his name, I'm sorry, as the Lizard. Um, were all great. I loved them. Uh, Doctor Strange being there was great too. Uh, it, it was just all around fantastic and uh, they, they fucking nailed it. Honestly, a 10 out of 10. And it's not even like the movie hype, movie theater hype uh, speaking to me. I just genuinely really enjoyed that movie. Um, I went to see it with my girlfriend opening night and the energy was just fantastic. 
I'll get to that later, though. Um, but yeah, number one movie of the year. Okay, my friends, it's now time to talk about all of the Marvel projects from this year. I just spent a bit talking about some of them, uh, the movies, but I'll get more into uh, some of them. So we're going to start out, uh, we're going to talk about WandaVision. Uh, the first MCU project to drop this year was a Disney Plus show. Uh, the order for when these shows was going to come out uh, was a bit moved around. And I mean, you know, some of that was out of their hands. We were in a, the pandemic numbers were crazy high. There was no vaccine. So they had to do what they could with what they had. But nonetheless, uh, mid-January, we got the first two episodes of WandaVision. Uh, and honestly, WandaVision might be my favorite of the four live action MCU shows to have come out. Uh, all of the, all of the, and by the way, moving forward, uh, I'm just going to be talking spoilers. So if you haven't seen any of these, uh, do yourself a favor, check them out. Uh, the shows are on Disney Plus, and the movies, some of them are on Disney Plus, some of them are coming soon to Disney Plus. I think Eternals is coming out in January. Spider Man, I know, isn't going to be on Disney Plus, but uh, it should be on like digital in like April, I think. So, uh, or just go see the movie in theaters if you haven't. It's so good. Anyway, with WandaVision, all of the uh, emotions, all of the stuff that happens in the show, uh, I love all the references to older sitcoms and stuff like that. I think they did a fantastic job with it. And honestly, I feel like this was like sort of a passion project for Marvel Studios because it's like, oh, what other opportunity are they going to have to make a sitcom? And they they did a fantastic job with, with doing it. Uh, I love all the charm that it has and uh, all the deeper things about it with grief and suffering and loss, all of these heavy topics. They, they did such a good job with, with discussing all of that. And uh, now they can finally call her the Scarlet Witch because of the Disney Fox buyout. So, I mean, hey, now's a better time than ever. As for the uh, the Ralph Boner fake out with Quicksilver and Evan Peters, I'm very disappointed. I was really hoping that, like, he would be the new Quicksilver. But honestly, that might not even happen now. Maybe with the Doctor Strange sequel, we'll get something cool, but... I mean, as of right now, I, I guess they're just not bringing Quicksilver back and they just wanted to do it as a little fan thing. And although it led to nothing, uh, still really exciting, though. Uh, nonetheless, the fact that Evan Peters is even in the show. Uh, I remember that got leaked like a few months beforehand and I just took it with a grain of salt. I was like, yeah, that's probably just a fan thing. But then it actually happened and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> They're really doing this this early. I like, you know, everyone was like, oh, it's just it's going to be a couple of years before we get any Fox Marvel projects. So they already have so much lined up. And no, they just threw in Evan Peters as Quicksilver into the WandaVision show like it was nothing like less than a year, not less than a year, but like, you know, a little over a year after the buyout. It probably would have been sooner if it weren't for the pandemic. But nonetheless, uh, I was really excited. I was really happy with what they did uh, with the character of Wanda, with Vision. Uh, honestly, the best they've ever been in an MCU project overall. Just fantastic. Next up is The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Uh, a pretty solid show. Reminds me a lot of the second and third Captain America movies and like the style that they went with. Um, this show is definitely the most grounded out of all of them, but I think that's what makes it really good. Um, they did a really great job with making John Walker an asshole. I absolutely despised his character. I just, I was just like, just please shut up like the entire time. And I think that was the point. And they did a fantastic job with that. Uh, the impact on Captain America's legacy, I feel like, was really shattered when, you know, he used the shield to kill that guy. I thought it was like, oh, fuck, this is like, this, like, they were really saying something with that. And, and I just, I was just in shock watching that. I was like, holy shit, like, there's, 
there's no there's no way they just did that and they did and overall like i i really enjoyed sam wilson as the new captain america uh i think he's going to do a great job they already have a fourth captain america movie in the works with him starring uh i i think that's going to be great i'm really excited for that zemo was also great it was really interesting seeing him back Having the Dora Milaje show up as well was really cool. That whole fight scene in the hotel room or whatever it was was really great too. The conversation with Isaiah Bradley was fantastic and really heartfelt. Love that too. And yeah, that's it for The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Those are my thoughts on that. As for Loki, uh, a show that I initially thought was like my favorite of the three, but you know, thinking about it more and more, uh, I feel like the relationship with Loki and Sylvie was a little not 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 to say it was bad but I don't know. I feel like it took over too much of the plot and the finale was just an entire setup for the second season. It, it didn't really feel like a finale. It was just like, oh, it's on a cliffhanger and well yeah, you know, a lot of shows end on a lot of seasons end on cliffhangers, but like come on. Uh they could have done a lot better with that. At least give us some kind of conclusion. Because they really don't I think the best part of Loki for me was the dynamic between Loki and Mobius. I think that was fantastic, honestly. I like like if I had to think of like my favorite part of Loki was just probably the interactions between those two. Every time they were on screen together, it was great. Not to say the show was bad or anything. I really enjoyed it. Uh it's just that I feel like the finale was a little empty looking back. It was nothing but just set up for the second season. And, uh, you know, I, I really hope the second season's good. And uh, I know it probably will be. But I feel like uh, you got to do some cool stuff with the first season, too. At least have a good ending or conclusion for that. The entire finale was just Kang talking for like 40 minutes. Just a little underwhelming. What If was an interesting project is the first animated series from marvel studios uh there have been plenty of animated marvel shows over the years but but this was the first one coming directly from the movie studio uh that's actually connected to all these movies i really enjoyed a lot of the stories they did especially the zombies episode that was probably my favorite one uh i really enjoyed the strange supreme episode the one with all of the avengers dying I thought was really cool. I enjoyed the finale episode that like had all of these characters coming together. Although I'm a little disappointed that, you know, they didn't do the whole Tony Stark going to Sakaar episode. Like, you know, those characters are in the finale, but they didn't even do that episode. I was a little confused. I was like, wait, did I miss something? Like initially watching as I remember like there was a Lego set that came out and like, like I remember seeing that at target and then like, you know, they come out with this, you know, this finale, and, like, they have, like, Gamora in there with Thanos's armor. It's like, yo, where were you this whole time? Like, what happened with that? I don't know. They just kind of, it was just like, oh, yeah, they're here, too. It's like, what's going on with that? Uh, I know, apparently, a lot of that was due to the pandemic, and they had a deadline, so uh, they had to cut the episode. But, like, I mean, come on. Like, why even have them in the finale if that episode didn't even air. Like, save it for next season. I'm pretty sure they're going to do something with it next season because, you know, there already is a second season in the works, and I'm really excited to see where that goes. Um, but, like, for now, it's like, oh, uh, like, I don't know. I, I, I just felt like the finale was a bit empty. I like the fact that, like, Ultron just killed Thanos instantly, and now I definitely see why they just, you know, they basically killed Vision in Infinity War. Well, they did kill him. But, like, they they pretty much nerfed him in the beginning of the movie by having him get stabbed by the staff. It's like, oh, yep, uh, our only hope in killing Thanos instantly is now gone. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> there's that. That part was just really funny. It was like, oh, it's that simple, huh? Still a pretty good show overall, though. As for the movies, I already touched on them a little bit. Black Widow, uh, not my favorite MCU movie, I feel like. Uh, it could have been a lot better, and I feel like just calling it Black Widow is a bit misleading. That might just be me, though. I don't think I'm alone on that, though, actually. Shang-Chi was also really great. Uh, I really enjoyed that as well. Eternals, which is something I have not talked about yet. Um, but honestly, uh, 
I even like what after getting out of the theater, I can't say it's one of my favorite MCU movies. It's definitely on the lower side. Um, great cast of characters though, like great casting and all that. A lot of really great new faces coming into the MCU. A freaking Kumail Nanjiani was probably the best part. Him and his agent or whatever he was, his valet. Uh, they were they were fantastic. Uh, I don't know. I just. I feel like the movie dragged on too long and the movie's like two and a half hours and they had all this like, you know, of course they got to explain all this, but I feel like they just dragged it on for so long. And by the time the action was coming around, I was just bored. I don't know. I feel like I was in like, you know, they had this Academy award winning director, Chloe Zhao making this movie that gave me a lot of hope. And like, I don't know. I feel like I'm not to say that it fell flat because there's a lot of great moments in the movie. I just, I don't know. I can't say it's one of my favorites. That post credit scene, though, with uh, Kit Harrington, that was that was that was great. Uh, where he's taking the sword out, and then you have that person next to him. Uh, so apparently, that's Blade, Mahershala Ali, uh, which is really exciting because I I cannot wait for that movie. Uh, the Wesley Snipes movies are great overall. The third one's kind of, eh, but like. Overall, it's a great trilogy, and Wesley Snipes is great as Blade, so I'm really excited to see what Mahershala Ali does with the character. Uh, I'm just really excited overall. Hawkeye is the fourth show, uh, at least the fourth live-action show for Marvel this year. Uh, that one was pretty good, too. Honestly, I think it's my least favorite of the four, though. Not to say that it's bad. I really enjoyed it, but I don't know, man. The whole tracksuit gang thing, I feel like, was just so uninteresting. And, like, I don't know, like, Hawkeye hasn't always really been one of my favorite superheroes, but I feel like this is definitely needed, especially with the post credit scene of Black Widow connecting to this this show, having Elena show up was great. Uh, and then Kingpin showing up in Episodes 5 and 6. Uh, as someone who hasn't watched the Daredevil show or any of the Marvel Netflix shows, um, which I really need to get on doing that, by the way, uh... I thought he was cool, and I, I hope he's not dead because Maya shoots him at the end, so, like, it goes off screen. So is he dead? I don't know, but I, I just hope he's not. I just hope he's not. I'd really love to see more from him. And finally, Spider-Man No Way Home. Let me just talk about Spider-Man No Way Home for a little bit. Uh, all the villains, fantastic. Willem Dafoe, Alfred Molina, Jamie Foxx, Thomas Hayden Church, Rise of Fonz were all fantastic. The fact that they were able to bring all of them back, plus bringing back Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield as Peter Parker and Spider-Man, was just incredible. Even though I practically knew about all the rumored castings and all that, thanks to the internet being the way it is, and it kind of being unavoidable, especially with the kind of YouTubers I watch, I didn't delve into it too much. I, I, I tried to stay away as much as possible with some things. It was like, oh, they had confirmed castings. Like, when they announced that Jamie Foxx and Alfred Molina were coming back, I was like, okay, this is going to be interesting. And I was like, can you imagine if they get Toby and Andrew back for this movie? And they, and like, you know, they hit it away from when from the ads and all that, all the press screenings and all that. Some of the press screenings only showed like the first 40 minutes of the movie. Just having them on screen with Tom Holland was just, was just so cool. It was like, like I went the opening night on Thursday night. Uh, the energy in the theater was, was so great. Everyone cheering. Freaking Daredevil's in the movie, too. Like, they have him in for a little bit. Well, not just, not Daredevil, but, like, Matt Murdock is Matt Murdock. Uh, Charlie Cox, Matt Murdock. Uh, just having him in the movie for a couple minutes was, was crazy. Everyone cheering for him. Uh, I went to see it a second time, and, like, it was dead silent when he popped up on the screen. I was like, are you serious? Like, no one's cheering for that? Like, really? Uh, but yeah, opening night was, was just so fun. Op but yeah, opening night was just so fun. I'm never going to forgive them for killing Aunt May, though. Uh, I'm still upset about that, and I probably will be for a long time. The spell that Peter Parker does at the end to make everyone forget him was also really saddening. Like, to see MJ and Ned just, like hardly acknowledge him and like I, I feel like the continuity is a bit odd though because like she's still wearing the dahlia necklace so like how does that work like does she know where she got it 
I feel like I'm just nitpicking, but like, but like, I was just, I was even wondering that the first time I saw the movie, I was like, she's still wearing the necklace. Does she know where she got that? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, uh, the movie was great. The new suit at the end is also really cool. It's even more comic accurate than the first MCU suit they did for Captain America Civil War. Uh, yeah, I overall, I, I love the movie. It was a fucking 10 out of 10. If you haven't checked it out more than once, uh, do yourself a favor. Watch it a second time or a third time. I'm probably going a third time at least before it leaves theaters because I I just I loved it. It was so good. And honestly, honestly, I don't know how they can top it. I don't know what they're going to do. Anyway, everybody, uh, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the podcast. I just wanted to take this time to talk about all the cool stuff from this year. And I'm hoping that 2022 brings a lot of really cool stuff to the table. Marvel already has three projects that are coming out. They're all sequels, but honestly, who cares? Uh, They're all characters we've grown to love at this point. We're getting a new Doctor Strange in May. That looks really promising. Apparently, there's going to be a lot of cool cameos from older Marvel projects in there. Like, I don't know. I'm not going to, I don't want to get into who because, you know, in case they're actually in the movie, I don't want to spoil it possibly spoil the experience for anyone i'm trying to go in that movie as blind as possible uh that movie's coming out uh we're getting a new thor movie which i loved thor ragnarok so if it's it's probably going to be just like thor ragnarok and if it is i'm all for it and then we're getting a black panther sequel in november uh really interesting to see how they're going to do that with the passing of chadwick boseman uh, I don't know how they're going to do it. Uh, I, I kind of wish they would recast him, though, because, like, T'Challa was, like, just getting started, and now they're just going to kill him off. And, like, what are they going to do from here? Is it really going to be the same or anything? I hope I hope they do something with it. I even I would even go as far as to say bring back Michael B. Jordan as Killmonger, make him the new Black Panther, and, like, you know... Maybe tone his violence down a bit. Give him a change of heart or something. I think that would be cool. There's a new Robert Pattinson Batman movie coming out. There's a Flash movie that's supposed to have a bunch of DC cameos in it. Uh, yeah, th- there's just so much happening in 2022. It like I feel like 2021 was already jam-packed with a bunch of stuff. And 2022 is probably going to be even crazier. It's like all the stuff that was supposed to come out in 2021 but was delayed. Plus a bunch of other stuff too. I feel like the next few years is just going to be jam packed with like tons of projects and Marvel doesn't look like they're slowing down anytime soon because they have stuff lined up for 2023 and beyond. And there's a bunch of stuff coming out on Disney plus like tons of shows they've announced and shit like that. I didn't even get into that, but yeah, I'm, I'm all here for the ride though. Anyway, guys, uh, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed, feel free to give me a rating on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you're listening. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to smash that like button. Uh, Leave your comments with feedback and all sorts of stuff like that. I'm over on Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, and other social media platforms. If you'd like to follow me on those, I have a Linktree link in the description for all my social media platforms. Anyway, I hope you guys had a great holiday season. Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa. If you celebrate Kwanzaa, all those holidays. Uh, hope you had a great one. Hope your new year is great. Uh, I'm not doing any resolutions though, because I uh, learned my lesson the last two years. The world kind of went to shit. So who knows? Uh, anyway, I'm just going to see where the boat of life takes me. Hoping to get this podcast out more. Uh, hoping to do a lot with it this, this upcoming year. I'm really excited for that. But anyway, thank you guys so much. It's been a great start to this new endeavor, uh, and I will see you guys in the new year.